Hi, and welcome to part three of our PowerShell Universal series. PowerShell Universal is an application or platform made by Iron Man Software, and these videos aren't, aren't sponsored by them at all. This is just a video created and a video series created by me because I do find that this tool is extremely useful um, for all types of IT work, especially system administration. It lets you create API endpoints, create graphical user interfaces, schedule jobs, all using PowerShell. And is a, just a very great tool to be able to build other tools for maybe other members of your team, or just again, very good practice for your home lab and using PowerShell. So in the last video, what we actually created were some simple endpoints uh, where it was just a simple route. And then we had some routes with some query strings. So we made a simple route, which just listed the users in our active directory. And then we had another route with a query string to get us a specific user. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we can actually pass in a body into one of our routes and actually use that body to, again, fetch a user um, or really be able to do anything that you could really do with a route, but really show you how to use that body that gets passed in. So let's go ahead and let's get started by creating our route here. And we're just going to create our route as user get user. But this time we aren't adding another slash or colons or anything. We're just going to click on OK. So there is our new route. So we can see the other one was the query string had a slash and then a colon username. And then we could reference that username variable. But this one, we just have a get user. We just have to do some simple property changes here since we don't want authentication in our case. And our environment, we want to make sure that we set that to PowerShell 7. We're going to click on OK. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to start creating our route here. So the first thing that I really like to do is I like to test to make sure that the input is being read properly. So what I like to do is I like to create a variable called input data. And we're going to make that equal to body. Now, one thing about the bodies in PowerShell Universal is that they actually get passed in as a string. So one of the first things that I want to do is always pipe the body to a convert from JSON and then make sure that the depth is something really, really big. I usually put 100. This way, it doesn't really matter what the user passes in. I should be able to read all of it. And then all I really like to do after that is just the return the input data. Now, what that really does is it really lets me pass in a body and then get that body right back. Make sure that my route is actually working properly as I would actually expect it to with what I'm passing in. So once we actually save that here, we're just going to copy the invoke rest method that PowerShell Universal shows us. And we're going to paste that in there. Then the only thing that we really need to do now is add our body. So our body is just going to be double quotes. And then we're going to put in a set of curly brackets and then a single quote username, single quote, colon, single quote, user one, single quote. The only other thing that we really need to add in here, otherwise you're going to get an error message, is going to be the content type. And we want the content type to be application slash, oops, forward slash, json and if we go ahead and we go ahead and run this here we get our body right back so we get the username and user and you can actually add more properties to this as well very easily so we can add like title colon um test and they're just separated by commas here so you can add more here so if we add another one we can do uh employee id and then colon single quote, one, two, three, four, single quote. And if we actually go ahead and run this, we're going to see that we get all of our properties back. So that is perfect. So now let's go ahead and let's actually work on our route to actually return the user that we want. Now we've actually already done a lot of this work for returning the user. So instead of repeating exactly what we've done, what I like to do is I like to go back in my other route here. We're just going to copy paste this entire code and we're going to go back into the new route and we're going to go ahead and paste that in here just right before the return. And I'm just going to erase the return input data because we already have the return results. And now we actually have the entire code that we really actually need. So what I like to do, let me just make this full screen so you guys can actually see everything properly here. So we have our input data. We're getting that back. 
And what we took from the last script is what I really like to do is keep all of my routes pretty much the same. So in this case, we're, we've created two routes to get us specific users. I like for them to return the exact same property set. So that's why we have these properties up top and we just copy pasted them. So it's a little bit nicer. Um, and then this way, it doesn't really matter what the end user is really using. If they're using the query string or if they're using the body method, they will get back the exact same subset of properties. And then we have our user equals get ad user identity username. Now we won't be able to use username because we don't have a username query string. What we do have is input data. So what we can actually reference here is input data dot username. Now this means that the input data needs to have a username property. We're going to get back to this because we need to validate to make sure that it actually has it. But we're just going to make sure for this first little test that we just assume that the username will be properly set. And then that's pretty much it. We're already returning our results. So everything here is good. So let's go ahead and let's save and let's minimize this. And let's go back to our code here. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase all these extra properties. We don't really need them for this test because we're just fetching a user. So if we go ahead and we run this here, we're going to see that we get a little bit of an ugly message, but not too, too bad. We just get cannot find an object with identity user one. And if we go ahead and we put test employee three, we're going to see that we get our employee back, which is exactly what we want. But if we do say specify just user instead of username, we get a different error message that says cannot validate argument on parameter identity. The argument is null, provide a valid value for the argument and then try running the command again. Now this can be pretty obscure to an end user that doesn't really know the code that's running on your route. They'll be like, I didn't pass in an identity and maybe they will change this to identity in hopes that that will actually fix it. But they're just going to get another error that is exactly the same because we don't have a username value here. So what I like to do is let's go back to our code. Now this is actually going to fix quite a few things. So what I like to do is wrap the entire properties here. So we're going to put a try statement here. We're going to just tab this in. I leave always the return result at the bottom here. So that shouldn't be an issue. We're going to end our try statement and then we're going to do a catch open and closing curly brackets. And then what I like to do is I like to just copy this result object here, pass that in. And all we're going to do is do a message equals dollar sign underscore dot exception dot message. Now, if you haven't seen some of my other videos, I do go over this in uh, the tutorials. Um, I believe it's in the beginner tutorials in Eric um, in error handling. So this will actually just shoot back the message that pops up in the error. So it's actually not too, too bad. This won't fix all of our problems. So let's actually go see and let's see just what changed. And uh, we're going to be able to see exactly what we still need to fix. So if we actually pass in this here, with identity, we still get the same message. It doesn't pop up in red. It actually gets passed back as a, as a JSON object, which is really, really nice, especially if other people aren't working with PowerShell querying your endpoint, because you don't need to be using PowerShell to actually query the PowerShell universal endpoint. They could be using JavaScript. They could be using Python. They could be using any other programming languages that really lets them do that. So what we want to do now is if we go ahead and change identity to username and we just change that to test employee, we will see in this case, we actually do get a pretty good error message that's pretty valid. Cannot find an object with identity test employee under the jacked domain. That's really, really, really good. If we put the three here, as we already know, we're going to get back our object. So everything is working really well except when the user might not put the proper property in there as a username, they might put something as user or identity. So what I actually like to do, is let's go back to the code here. And right before the try statement, what I like to do is I like to put an if statement and it's going to be if input data dash get member 
So we're going to pipe that to get member. What I like to do is I like to actually just rewrap this in parentheses. And then we're going to do a dot name. So we only want the names. And then we're going to do a space dash contains space username. So this is going to see if it contains the property of username. And if it does, great. Else, this is where we actually want to do something. And this is where we're going to do a result object here. And our result is going to be um, just invalid body parameter. Please be sure to include username as a property, right? But you can actually word this message in any real way that you want. And the only thing that I really want to do afterwards is I want to exit out of the route right away. So right after is I want to do the return result here. And then we're going to hit save. And now if we go ahead and we test it out here, we have our user test employee three. If we go ahead and we run this, we get a nice invalid invalid body parameter, please be sure to include username as property. You can even probably give an example. And then all we need to do is change this to username. And if we hit run, we get our test employee free. So what I would actually do is I would probably copy this and just paste that in here as an example. So once we have that, we're going to have example and then uh, test user and we're going to hit save and once we actually go back here let's do a little our little typo and let's hit run so we get invalid body parameter please be sure to include username as a property example and then we get the proper um thing to actually pass into our body which could be very very handy um, for our users to be able to have as something to see so they know exactly what is expected from them as a body so that is a very good way to strengthen um, your endpoints is just validate the input that you're passing in and also try to wrap it in a try catch statement i know this is not something that we did with the query string um but i just wanted to start off pretty simple and then we're getting into some a little bit more complicated routes now where we're really going to want to make sure that the user is passing in things correctly um with the query string we already know that it's going to be username anything after that slash it's going to be a username so it's very easy the only real error message that you're going to get is ever is going to be cannot find the object so that is fine but as soon as we get into body you're really putting a lot of focus on the user getting that input correctly so you really want to validate that input and it could be very good to validate some of those inputs for uh, exploits as well depending on what type of system you're working on as well so that is really how to create a endpoint and use the body parameter in PowerShell Universal. So the next couple videos, we'll see how to create a little bit more endpoints. And then we're going to get into some of the graphical user interfaces. If you guys want to see anything specific in PowerShell Universal, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to cover every single part that you guys want to see. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that uh, like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and once again be sure to tune in on saturdays at 11 a.m eastern time for the live streams um, this is where you'll be able to see all the newest content first that's where usually i explore new technologies with um uh, with the viewers we're going to be exploring docker in the future ansible uh, we've looked at powershell universal quite a while ago on the live streams together um, so it is a great place to interact with other viewers as well thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys on the next video